Hi and welcome to Lenovo ThinkLine Training. In today's session we'll be doing a walkthrough of the web interface for the Lenovo Terminal Management Software. In this screen we've entered the IP address of the management server provided to us by the installation process. If you're unfamiliar with the installation process of LTM please refer to the previous video. The initial screen for the LTM server provides us with the device's inventory. This will give us a listing of all of the thin clients that are currently or have been managed by this management server. Devices with a green status are currently managed. Devices with a red status, however, are no longer managed by this server or have disconnected from the network. We can perform tasks on thin clients by selecting individual devices. Alternatively, we can select all devices from this drop down list. Once the devices have been selected, we can use the Actions pane to perform tasks on this thin client. This includes being able to view specific items, including certificates, connections, settings, profiles, or software packages that are currently stored on the device. We can also apply these settings to the device if we need to. We can clone them from the device, or in fact, remove them. For the purposes of this demo, we'll be cloning a profile from the thin client that we set up in the previous video. Under the profile clone options, we can give this profile a name, the profile a description. We can then select the connections that we previously created on the Litos operating system. We can also select device settings. For the purpose of the demo, I'll quickly select all of the settings of course, we may not want to keep all of these settings. For example, we may want to take display options out of there if we don't want to clone all of the display settings and apply them to every thin client on the network. This allows us to customize this process. Once we submit, we've now cloned the profile into our profiles inventory. If we take a look at this, we can manage the profile from this inventory. We can also edit the profile. This allows us to change the name and description, or in fact, add and remove features from this profile on the fly. Currently, the mode is set to select devices, which means that we can select the individual devices that will receive this profile. Alternatively, we can set this as the default profile for the environment, meaning that every new thin client that connects to this management server will immediately pick up this profile as soon as they register with the management server. Alternatively, we can select to apply by terminal details. This includes the device name, IP address or subnet range, model or operating system version. Other options for the mode include apply by group membership. If you have created groups within the LTM server, you can apply this profile to specific groups of devices. We'll explain this section a little more when we look at groups. We have the ability to attach a disk image to this profile so that we have a standard disk image for this environment. We can modify the connections to either add or remove connections from this profile. We can also add or remove device settings from this profile as well. Other options here include certificates. If we have SSL certificates that are specific to our network, for example, if we have a VMware view or a remote FX server that requires a secure connection, then we can upload them directly to the profile which will apply them directly to the client device. We can also include software packages here, which include customizations such as wallpapers, or in fact, client updates or downgrades if necessary. We can further customize this process by creating connections or modifying connections directly from the connections interface. The settings that we'll find here are exactly the same as what we can see in the Litos control panel. We can modify any of the properties of this connection 
including auto start or auto restart, or in fact the URL for this browser connection for example, directly from this interface and reattach it to our profiles as necessary. Disk images can be uploaded in this interface. As you can see, we utilize file shares for disk images. We do not store them on the management server itself so as to keep the local footprint down and also for ease of management of disk images. Under the device settings pane, we have the ability here to manage our device settings that have been cloned from a thin client device. We can also edit these settings so that we can change the properties of them on the fly. Under the certificates inventory here, you can see a full listing of any SSL certificates that have been uploaded to this server. Of course, we can add or remove certificates from here as well. Software packages can be managed from this interface. Again, we utilize a file share such as HTTP or FTP. Under the tasks inventory, we can see any scheduled tasks that are set to run on our thin client devices. We can select the log button here to see whether the task has started, finished, the output and the result of this task as well. We can also modify this task so that we can change the date, time and frequency as necessary. Under the logs section, we can see a basic listing of logs for specific tasks that have been performed on thin client devices. The management server gives us the ability to create these groups. These tabs can be selected so that we can limit the view down to see specific listings of thin client devices. As you can see, multiple groups can be applied to thin clients at the same time. This helps us limit the views down and provide us with an ease of management. Alternatively, we can use the search bar up here in the top right in order to search for any of the information across any field here that you see within the LTM management server. This can be, for example, an IP address, or in fact, a host name of a device. As you can see, as we're typing, the list updates in real time to show us the thin clients that contain this information. We can also see further information for thin clients under the information tab. This includes last contact, MAC address, hostname or other information such as the UUID or disk image version for that fact. We can add groups to thin client devices by selecting the tag option and then selecting one of our pre-created groups. The group is instantly available and again, we can select the group to limit the choice down to that specific group. Under the settings options here, we can see server settings for troubleshooting purposes. We can see a product listing of all of the products that are currently managed by our management server. We can add storage locations. Currently, we support HTTP, FTP or SIFS based locations. To add a share, we simply give the share a name, a URL, and a username and password if they're required. Under the Groups pane, we have the ability to create or modify groups that have been created. If we select the Edit button or the Add button, these will perform tasks on the groups. We can give the group a name and we can specify a color coordination for this group.
Under the Automatic Membership tab, we have the ability to specify any devices within a specific subnet range, model or operating system to automatically enter this group immediately when they register with the management server for the first time. This adds for ease of deployment. We can modify this group or colour coordination as necessary. The database hot copy allows us to take a full backup of the instructions that have been supplied by this management server. For example, the list in front of you now. We can remove or leave these features in as necessary. For example, if we want to remove logs from this list, we absolutely can. This file is a very small file that will back up to your desktop. If we have a look at the properties of this file, for example, we have taken a full backup of this server, and this is 30 KB in size. This is a very convenient and quick process and will help for upgrading the management server as necessary. Under the Permissions tab, we support fully connecting the LTM server to Active Directory so that we can specify AD groups of administrators who have access to this web interface. For example, from this window, we can select a specific group of administrators from within Active Directory. We can then specify the permissions of the management server directly from this interface below, including read and write privileges. If we want to configure VNC permissions, we can specify from this window whether we want to ask permission of the local user whether we can shadow their terminal, or whether we will allow the override option so that we can force a VNC shadow from this window. If we log out of our admin account and show this process, we can log in as a user account that has less permissions. And as you can see, permissions that are not accessible by this user have been removed from the UE view. This feature is particularly helpful for a help desk type scenario. Other tasks that can be performed on thin client devices include the ability to execute a file. This allows us to push files down to thin client devices, such as batch scripts to Windows embedded thin clients, or simple commands to thin client devices. We can also update the LTM agent if necessary. We can perform power options, including reboot, power off or wake on LAN. We can also schedule these actions for a later execution. This includes date and time. As well as the frequency of this command. From this window, we can also see network configuration of thin client devices, and we can modify these options as necessary. The LTM server also includes the ability for us to VNC shadow to a thin client device directly from the web interface. When we connect to a thin client, we have full keyboard and mouse access over the thin client device. This is rather helpful for troubleshooting purposes and allows us to manage our devices from a central location. We can log into virtual desktops, or we could manage the local LITOS operating system. Another feature of the LTM web interface 
is the ability for us to export the configuration or the device inventory of the management server to the following formats. We can also use the export wizard in order to assist with this process. This concludes the LTM web interface overview. Thank you very much.